Hey guys, welcome to game two between Master Ray and Dreamer. Dreamer, I like his... I'll give Dreamer this. I'm not sure whether he GG'd or not in the last one. He might... Here's the thing. Sometimes what players can do is they have to recreate games, so sometimes they'll GG and chat afterwards. I'm going to assume that's what happened here and give him the benefit of the doubt, or her the benefit of the doubt. I never know with these players, unless I see them stream. I do want to give Dreamer this. I appreciate the consistency in color. Green Protoss, upper left-hand corner, bottom right-hand corner. Master Ray as whatever this color is. Peach? Peach. I'm going to say peach. Let me know what you guys think that color is. This is on um, Overwatch. Which... I'm kind of interested that Dreamer is choosing, because it's loser's pick on the map selection. And Dreamer opted for Overwatch. Beige, I'm hearing from chat. Beige! Yeah, I'll say beige. That is kind of a beige, right? Colors are weird things. We have so many names for colors. And just whatever. That's that's a different rant altogether. Anyway. I'm interested that Dreamer opted for Overwatch for this map selection. Because it's usually Dreamer who's opening that two-gate slight bit of pressure. And granted, those Zealots can make it across the ramp initially. But as far as any... I feel like that tend to, tends to lend into more gateway-heavy follow-ups as far as options. Although we have seen him go two-gate Robo... And then Nexus almost entirely up to this stage. But this ramp right here makes superior unit counts in just pure gateway units a little bit less viable in the mid game. And kind of pushes things more towards two gate or tech player reaver drops or things like that. Master Ray opting for an assimilator. We do see an assimilator opposite side. So Dreamer mixing it up a little bit. I'm trying to think back and puzzle out whether we have seen a one gate a simulator opening for Dreamer. I almost feel like he's opened up two gate nearly every time. We'll see. Simulator is up. We just use Cybernetics Core right in front of Master Ray to go ahead and show off that tech. Master Ray plopping down his own assimilator and getting those three probes on gas. I feel like Master Ray, last time I saw him on Overwatch in the semifinal, I think it was the semifinal, really put on a clinic on this map. Master Ray just kind of scouting out the corner to look for that. Keep his probe alive and also make sure that there wasn't anything hidden, although I don't think there could have been anything hidden at that stage. A pylon in that back corner. Very late scout here for Dreamer. Dreamer at, what is this? About almost the three minute mark. Two minutes, 45 seconds. Very late scout coming into Master Ray's base. It's not gonna cost him anything, but Master Ray opting to skip the Zealot altogether and get his Dragoon up. Same thing opposite corner. Dragoon is going to be produced a little bit earlier, and I think this might be the difference in that earlier probe scout. I almost want to see mathematical computations towards that that end, like what difference does the probe scout make and how quickly you get that initial Dragoon out open and kind of the advantages and disadvantages. I'm sure the Koreans have all done this. Range upgrading for both players. It's mirror builds thus far. Although a little bit of an earlier pylon to follow up. Mass raid. Is he going to get that... Does not get that probe out. Might have gotten lucky with a misfire. Sometimes the Dragoons just kind of mess up. So Dreamer gets a small, a slight advantage. Because first of all, doesn't get punished for a later scout. And secondarily, and that actually might have been calculated in his part. But also secondarily, is going to keep this probe alive as he marches it back to his base. So he's going to be up one probe in the early game. And small advantages turn into large advantages eventually. You pile them up. Range about halfway finished for both players. And now the question is, is what happens next? It looks like Dreamer is thinking about going... Yeah, he's going one gate nexus. Bit of a risky build. But it's going to pay off because Master Ray has opted for one gate robo comparatively. And I actually like this play from Dreamer because, again, this is one of those maps where the ramp plays a huge factor and you don't want to move attack forces out. And you can kind of defend it, yeah, because it's a funnel and you can kind of get the extra hits and whatever not. So I think that was actually a very intelligent play, a very heads-up play on his part. He's like, okay, I'm going to go one gate nexus knowing that players are less likely to go for more gateway heaven heavy openers. So I feel like I can get away with this, and I think he is going to get away with it. And that should put him at an early economic lead. Probe making its way out is going to see three dragoons and immediately scoot its way back out. I like these pylons at these locations for Master Ray, just knowing that this tends to be more of a tech-heavy map, so it provides the options for 
Reaver drops, things like that, and heal, or even DT drops, so he would be able to see it coming. Additional gateway here for Dreamer in that back corner. And the Dragoon's moving forward to go ahead and pick off, so... Oh! Probe does sneak out alive, though. Is it going to be able to outmaneuver? Oh, yeah, so there's the misfire from the high ground to low ground. Working to his advantage, trying to... Oh, I was going to say, might be able to sneak out. Master Ray with a slight supply lead, but the Nexus is now up for Dreamer, so he's going to be able to... Yeah, this is where it starts accelerating for him. He's got robotic support bay. Getting the Observer first, I almost wanted to see him go for a Reaver first. But he doesn't know what tech Master Ray has comparatively, so he has to respark, uh, respark, respect the Dark Templar, potentially. Master Ray moving out with a probe of his own. Here's the thing, though. With the Dark Templar, you can kind of clog that ramp and, and buy yourself a little bit of time. Pylon building. So Master Ray just now... Saving up the resources to go ahead and take his Nexus. This is actually going to put him significantly behind. He's up three probes for the moment, but that's going to change rapidly, assuming Dreamer can keep up with his macro. And that is going to give Dream Dreamer a significant lead into the mid-game. Fortunately for Master Ray, this is one of those maps that just lets you sit back and macro off two bases. Unfortunately for Master Ray, because he's kind of playing right into that sort of style... Dreamer might have an opportunity to go ahead and take advantages and go for a quick third and play whatever he's going to play into the mid game uh, beforehand. Keep in mind, though, until that observer gets into Master Ray's base, he's not going to know it. And Master Ray actually, you can see how in the dark he is, he's producing a Reaver to provide additional defense just in case Dreamer had gone uh, something a little bit more aggressive. Now, Dreamer moving out, putting those pylons at the corner locations just to see incoming drops, things like that. I think he knows with this gateway opener, I think he knows what position he's in. He knows he's in that early lead. Another probe scout going to go ahead and meander down, and I think I think this one should be able to get up, but even if it dies on the front, should have a pretty good idea of what Master Ray's up to. Master Ray just now, and keep, keep in mind the time difference of this, so he's just now putting down his second and third gateway, and these two gateways have been pumping for quite a, quite a while. Reaver's being built. There's already a single Reaver there, and Dreamer already in position with those Dragoons just in case a shuttle was going to make its way across. That Observer might get picked off by Master Ray, so I'm going to try to keep an eye. Yeah, so that gets picked off. Catches nothing. That Probe, does it, did it die of the Reaver? Died to, I think, one of these Dragoons, but sees the Nexus producing. So that was a huge... So I, I know that seems a little bit insignificant, but that was actually pretty significant overall. Because first of all, that's going to force another Observer to be built for Master Ray. You can see he's already queued it up rather than a Reaver or something along those lines. Which you might have done anyway, just the way it's at in the build order. Fourth gateway down. But uh, and so, but critically, that's going to deny Master Ray a lot of information as far as what he's up against. And Dreamer with the Probe Scout maintains his observers and knows that a Nexus is up comparatively. So he knows a, exactly the position he's in. Blocking Pylon at that third. Also to provide additional scouting information, he's got these Reavers. Significant supply count. The thing is, is can Dreamer with his macro management, looks like he's popping down two additional gateways to go up to four, can with that macro management turn this into an actual lead? Because right now, despite all of this, Dreamer is still behind three probes and just about even in the overall supply count. Dreamer moving out, he does have, critically he has a shuttle with those two Reavers as opposed to no shuttle. Looks like he's going to start swinging out towards this six o'clock location. Seeing that probe there. He's going to have to be careful. Master Ray having trouble gathering his army to kind of engage this. I think he's should be able to see where it's at. And Dreamer looking for an engagement point. And actually might be able to... We'll see. Ooh, Dragoon's moving in. Piecemeal for Master Ray, which is not what you want to do against Dreamer. Might end up losing a couple units. Bonus as a result. Dreamer actually pushing down into the Reavers on the ground. Good hit on that Reaver. Another good hit hitting the Reaver, and Dreamer just doing some good micromanagement and nice engagement point. And he might win it right here, because he still has two Reavers standing versus Master Ray's none. With that little move out, more reinforcements coming in. He needs to back, Dreamer needs to back up and allow these Reavers to do their work on this forward Dragoon line. I don't see any reinforcements coming across the way, but this natural expansion is certainly going to end up losing some probes. Master Ray needs to pull probes now. Too late. is end Oh, losing a lot of probes as a result. I kind of want to see if I can, in between, get a good look at the kill count here. Eight kills. And the Reaver scoops up. So this is still two Reavers and four Dragoons at the natural doing some damage. I, it's not GG just yet for Master Ray, but he is... Oh, maybe it is, actually. Upon losing this Nexus, he might call GG. 
Now Dreamer in a very strong position. And that was a huge engagement. And again, I talked about that critical moment where Master Ray lost his observer and Dreamer was able to see what was at that natural. If Master Ray had that observer, if he was able to keep an eye on that army, we might be in a different situation at this moment altogether. Small advantages can turn into big advantages and really change the course of the game. I think that was the critical moment, honestly. As far as the sweep of everything, Dreamer up a huge supply count. Now he's doing that kind of Camp the Natural thing once again. Master Ray is opting. He's like, okay, I know I'm at one base. I've got a bit of a bank. Going to get level 1 weapons, which has been working for quite some time. Fortunately, looks like Dreamer's getting level 1 weapons as well. Now has an Observer looking at his opponent. Here's the thing. I think it's four gateways? Four gateways is what you can power off one base, approximately, of units mixed. This is too many gateways for the amount of bases that are there, I believe, for Master Ray. So it's possible he'll be able to reproduce, and it'll just have to, he'll have to out-micro his opponent, basically. Gonna end up losing pylons here at the 6, Dreamer reinforcing. Still wanting to say, basically, right in his opponent's face. Plus he has this Observer to kind of look at everything that was here as far as army composition. And this is the other big critical bit for Master Ray that really makes things desperate and difficult as far as any sort of comeback, as there's still two Reavers on the ground. And he's going just pure gateway units and a Reaver without a shuttle. And as far as the timing, yeah, now his bank is expended. This is about the moment he needs to kind of walk out and start doing things. A lot of Zealots. Does he have Zealot leg speed yet? About halfway finished. So the timing not quite working out for him. He might be able to get some pot shots here on the low ground, but it might end up losing. Did get one nice burst on that grouping of Dragoons. Ooh, might even got a Dragoon kill. Loses his Reaver for it, though. Oh, does lose his Reaver. Oh, got some nice hits comparatively, though. Still denied his natural expansion. Dreamer just needs to spend his resources, and he should win this match. He's going to go ahead and take that 12 o'clock Nexus as well. Master Ray continuing to grab these troops out. I assume he's going to go out as soon as level 1, as soon as that Zealot leg speak finishes. And actually, he might be able to swing right back into this, because Dreamer is leaving these units here rather than backing them off. So he might end up forth forfeiting all these armies, this entire army to these speed Zealots. It's going to come down to these Reavers and how well they're able to group damage these Zealots. Pushing down now, Zealots eating a lot of Reaver shots, Dreamer repositioning down along those lines, trying to back those Reavers out so they stay alive. Ooh, one getting taken out without able to do a lot of additional shots. Those Zealots just chewing through absolutely everything. Now that Reaver scooped up, Dreamer still sitting here with the rest of this army, and I think he just needs to back up and reinforce. Redropping that Reaver, finally dropping a shot, targeting that back line instead of targeting those Zealots, and so Master Ray is able to clear out that natural expansion. Dreamer picking off... And, well, sorry, Master Ray picking off the Reaver overhead. Now Master Ray able to push things through. He, I don't think, yeah, he doesn't need to bother with the natural expansion. He needs to win with this army on the ground now. It is going to be tough because, again, ooh, look at all these High Templar just waiting at this bridge. So despite all that, is the Psy Storm just finishing? I'm not sure if that was Master Ray's. I'm kind of curious where we are on the, I think that, no, that's Dreamer's Psy Storm. Psy Storm's going to finish just in time, re-engaging on this line. All he has to do is defeat this army, and that'll be it. Some Zealots moving their way down. Now at a, cl a closer reinforcement point for Dreamer. Zealots on... Oh, good side storm. Another good side storm blanketing that back Dragoon line. Mastery still has some units, but this is looking ugly for him. Morphing in some Archons that actually might be in some trouble. Let's see if the reinforcements are able to re-engage here. Dreamer actually leaving some of his uh, attack force kind of out of position where he's going to get picked off. One Archon morphs. Some more units starting to swing their way down. Being a little bit sloppy, but Mastery's still all in basically, with this follow-up. Another Archon able to morph on the front. It's very quickly taken out. And now Master Ray has no army to speak of. He is down 10 supply, and Dreamer can just continue to press forward into this, honestly. Master Ray distance mining at his main, uh, from his main. Yeah, his main's mined out. Now all Master Ray, uh, or sorry, all Dreamer has to do is survive, plopping down additional gateways. He's got that 12 o'clock. Yeah, huge commanding position. Is he going to wait for additional Reavers, additional High Templar? His game to lose at this stage. And it would take a miracle. An absolute miracle. Because here's the thing. Master Ray, look at all this production he's got. Four gateways, sometimes four and a half. <clears throat> you can defend, or you can produce out of. You can see he's producing basically just zealots here. He's distance mining at one. He is. This is still one base versus three, effectively. Because the main's still kind of producing. Two bases up. He's going, going ahead and cannon that, just in case there were Dark Templar. So it's two base versus one. 
Dreamer has map control, superior production, better tech. And it looks like equivalent upgrades. So everything working in Dreamer's favor. The one advantage Master Ray has is observers <laughs> and key points and positions. However, being able to see something doesn't mean you can stop it. <clears throat> so to sum things up, Dreamer is effectively still at one base. Master Ray, or, or sorry, Ma I'm mixing up the players here. Master Ray is effectively at one base. Dreamer is pr still producing effectively off three, although that is going to be not the case in about a minute or so. The supply count, 40 supply advantage for Dreamer. Yeah, I'm going to say that barring barring like a computer getting unplugged or a Miracle Zealot glitching out somewhere in the map and just being able to devastate everything, this game is going to Dreamer. And he's t going ahead and taking an additional base in that upper end corner. <clears throat> Looks like he's looking to re-engage kind of the Zelts on the front. Does have a single Reaver in the shuttle that he can plop down an Archon for Master Ray. Kind of sneaking back here. Let's see the storms on the Zelts can be a little bit challenging. Nice storm, not hitting his shuttle. Ooh, hitting a couple of his own units, but still hitting mostly Zealots. And some good follow-up storms. I think this will be the, yeah, this will be the fight that wins it for Dreamer. Or it call, forces Master Ray to call GG. Another High Templar actually can just wander in and storm all this. There's GG. Nicely played by Dreamer overall. I really love the decision early on. In particular, I love that decision early on to go for that Nexus off the one gate rather than opting for Robo first because of the nature of the map. Hope you guys enjoyed it. One game apiece from both players. We'll move on to game three momentarily. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for listening.